All right, Arup, we had to get around to this, and I don't know. Uh, this is the Kodiak by Tucson Knives, and it's Savage Bastard Blade Works that did the design. Um, it's got free-floating bearings around this pivot, and it's got a crazy-looking pivot. And it's like a front flipper, middle finger flick, back flipper, but I, I don't find it that easy to flip. And we're going to get into it. We'll open it up and kind of take a look and see how this thing works. But I just like the design so well. Uh, and I ended up somehow with two of them. I think I bid on one, uh, not thinking I'd get it. And then I bought one off the Ollie store or something. And so I got two. I only got one now. But yeah, I mean, this flipper tab here is so muted, you know. But I, I guess you could say two-stage flipper. I mean, for me, just like that. Now, uh, it's also a front flipper thing. So you could do that. And you can do that in all in one flick. And then with the, oh, almost got it. With the fuller, you can finger flick it like that. Just interesting uh, design. And don't put my fingers on that blade. Oh, piece of paper, please. Let's check that out. 14C28N blade. Uh, I know that Mazwan uh, Mokhtar helped out on this, probably with the rendering of the design or something. But Bastard Savage Bastard Blade Wars was the main mojo on this. The 234. Just incredible. Um, it's a thick brick. Let me let me let's get some of the stats on this thing. Yeah, 16 millimeters. Wow, 0.63. So you got that. Uh, oh, well, kick it open. And uh, three and a half inch blade, which is 90 millimeters overall, eight and a half inches, which is 21 and a half centimeters. Oh, get this back here. Let me do the blade. I don't know. Is that four, four millimeter? No, no, it's not four. 3.6 millimeter at 0.14. So any of you guys got this, you could chime in on this. Tell me, what do you think? Well, they actually put Kodiak, the name on there. TS-234. I don't remember, I don't remember ever seeing a Tucson knife with a model number on the blade. I don't remember that at all. So... This is the first one I've ever seen like that, but it's got Mazwan's little moniker on here. Uh, well, let me see. Again, we're going to flip this open and kind of check out. And lock up's 25 to 30%. Let's see the drop. Ooh, it's scary. I don't want it to hit me. But no, it doesn't. I mean, it'll let go. But then it'll drop like that as long as you've got that uh, lock bar uh, pushed away, but, uh, see what I'm saying? Now it keeps swinging, but I let go of that lock bar to complete it and it, and it, it kind of sticks. So it's centered. I don't have any blade player lock rock. What do we got here? Oh, probably Savage Bastard on here. Uh, blade works, uh, their badging as well. So we got everybody's badging on here. Tucson, Mazwan, Savage Bastard, you name it. Uh, you know, the design flow is interesting. It's fine. I mean, this is a decision here to do a front flipper type of thing. Uh, blade to handle length is adequate. And you've got almost an integral look to this knife, don't you? And this ought to be interesting to take it apart because where do you take it apart at? Well, I guess you got to start here and then you got to screw there and underneath, God only knows where you go, right? How much does it weigh? Because it, it feels like a chunk. It feels fairly heavy for what it is. And yeah, it's 181 grams. Woo, baby. Uh, hmm. Let's roll back around ounces. 6.42 ounces. 
So that, that's pretty heavy for a six or eight and a half inch long knife. And it's really thick and you got a lot of metal in here, don't you? So uh, you got a big old recurve blade on there. I mean, it's really sharp. Recurves aren't my favorite, but I think they give you a lot of style points. I mean, the design look of a recurve is always intriguing to me. I guess you can get up close up here. Uh, this jimping up here is good for traction. Uh, ergos, pretty neutral. Um, kind of setting right here with my fingers. Uh, reverse grip's comfortable, though. This one's not bad. It's just I think I'm having to go ahead and hog the whole space there with that finger and then put the rest of them on there. Uh, pocket clip, titanium, reasonably deep carry. Um, not very springy, and I don't remember what it was like in my pocket. So any of you guys that have the Kodiak or have had the Kodiak are welcome to chime in and kind of Give me your opinion on it. Uh, maybe, I mean, both of the ones I had had about the same action, which it's not super fluid type action. You see what I'm saying? That, I don't have enough stroke on that flipper tab to really kick it. Ooh, close, close. I don't know if that'll improve over time. I like the carbon fiber on here. It's pretty showy. Not a lot of traction, though. And, come on. Don't eat grandma's fried chicken before you try and do that, my friends. Fit and finish is good on this knife. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Check out my balance. Oh, there's my balance. Okay. And let it drop, let it drop, let it drop, let it cut my thumb off. And there it goes. It's dropping. Yeah, I don't know what to make of it. It's just not as smooth and fluid as some knives. It's fascinating. And it's amazing that it really rolls around as long as you keep your thumb um, knocking that lock bar to the side like that, pushing it aside, then not a problem. You let go of it, and it's a little tougher. So I, I was, I was going to get like something to put across here. You can, uh, but I'm just using pressure to unscrew this. Uh, whether I should or not, I don't know. I never like to screw my pivots down real too tight. Just enough to give me the right kind of action and make sure I don't have any blade play. So there's that. And what do we got inside? We don't know yet. Let's take this off. Okay. I've got a bit of trepidation here on what I'm going to find. Come on. Okay. Wow. We going to get it off? There we go. So we had, yeah, when you have these stems still up here, so high up in here, and you got this thing set way down in that carbon fiber, that really makes it difficult to do. And so let's see, we take this little carbon fiber scale off, and we got the carbon fiber scale off. And what do we got below? Well, now we got more screws. And these are number sixes. I don't see anything here yet, thank God, for small favors. There's one screw. So these are these internal screws, and there's two of them. So in case nobody warned you and nobody warned me, you might want to try and pull this thing apart and not know that you've got these internal. But looking at the fact that there's really no screws out here, you know you probably got some underneath. 
Okay, let's see if we can kind of slide you up and away. And I wonder if this is going to help. Let you let go. Okay, here we go. I don't know. What's holding you on? Okay, let me see what's holding you on. Oh, baby. Okay. Okay, what do we got? This was a trip. This was a trip. And there they are, folks. Free floating. What is this? Number number ninety-eight or eighty-eight? Number ninety-eight. Ceramic detent ball. Ceramic bearings. And they're just but they're kind of in a real heavy soup here. Uh I don't know if we can improve, if we should try and improve on that or what. And let me pull this blade off. Okay. Just kind of wipe it up a little bit. Okay. So what do we got? This is always an adventure, isn't it? Yikes. Okay, so there's the pivot. I wonder if a guy, it kind of feels a little kind of, a little edgy in there, but I think, oh, it's just carbon fiber. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if you polish this, if that would make any difference on the action. Okay, um, no, it was not easy to disassemble. I think when you have things like this coming all the way up and through, it may have been better to pull this from this side if you could have to free up the other scale to pull that off easier because that's sitting up above grade there just causes an area that's tight to, to slide it off of, the other side off of, and, well, it's not dump those out, but you can see that, you know, it sticks up above here, and, uh, and then you gotta take that scale off first and then take these screws out of here second. So, yeah, you're gonna have to work with it uh, to get that apart. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to get liberal with some lubrication here. I don't know if it's really gonna make any difference, but I think it can't hurt. I don't think it can hurt. So, um, and here, okay. And then on here, I like a little bit lighter lube than what these have been doing. And on this side, the same way, I'm gonna just put a drop on each one of these and I gotta see what I'm doing. Okay, um, this is the outer circle here, and so this is the pivot. It slides into, okay. Now we've got a blade, right? And there's the stop right there. And then we have this scale. I mean, it's not incredibly uh complicated was there anything else they put on here other than number 98 
Well, everybody got their damn name on the blade, so I guess not. And or the pocket clip. Get any hairs or something away from here. And actually, to hell with it. Uh, okay. Um, for better or worse, right? For better or worse. Okay. Get out of there. Okay. We got the stop. We got everything down. Uh, okay. So then, uh, this, on this side, uh, you just push it through. Now we're good. Now we got to uh, put two little screws in here that are need to drop in here. And these are number sixes. Okay, I just need to get engaged, and they don't have a lot of extra thread to do so. So I'm pushing and turning to make sure they make good contact. Okay, and underneath, they didn't have to give them any because they're flush. They didn't have to give them any break there and so this goes back on here like this and this is engaged and so then this goes right on here okay okay backed it up get it in now I can feel it's right it's right okay it's centered let's put the pocket clip on I really fought long and hard with this pocket clip and so you probably are better to take this off first and then unscrew this and push that post down through there if you can. Um, and it's tight because I think I tried to almost distort some of the carbon fiber there waggling it off all right we got it put back together um yeah i'm just not sure i'm feeling the whole system of how they did the bearings i just don't think it's it's working that well it's not working that well for me and if you have one of these kodiaks you tell me uh, I don't think it's the most free-flipping fluid knife. And when I looked at it, I thought maybe this would be really incredible in that, in that regard. And it's not. It's not. So uh, if you're looking for something that's just absolutely a dream to front flip or, to, or you know, flip like this, nah, this is not it. But it's an interesting design. And let me see. There you go. Just like that. Interesting design, at the least. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. The Kodiak Savage Bastard Blade Works and Tucson Knives. And you know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.